Hello! How are you? This is Lakesh. No, How are you doing? Lakesh, Lakesh. I have come to visit for today. How are you doing? Very good. How are you? That is good. That is very good. I have much news, but it is all sort of boring for humans because it's about my planet. But my granddaughter is doing well. She is in school and she is doing so wonderfully. And I still spend much time with her, as much time as I can. And also they are developing some other people to come to Earth for channeling as well from my planet. So there are others that are interested in bringing information from our planet to yours. So that is wonderful. We already have a few people that channel through your humans, Jean Jean, which is, which is called Georgette on your planet, and we have Arusha and Yushura and Kalish. All are from our planet, and all are coming to speak to different people. Kalish right now is very quiet, but he does move into the body and moves body parts and things of that nature. But he is very anxious to start speaking as well. We also have some others that are coming. Erara is preparing and Santiti. Very, very wonderful times are coming. And we will bring more information from the spirit world and from our world to you, helping you with your ascension times. That sounds is there any questions for me? I know that I have not been able to come for a while. It, it has been a little busy. I am learning uh, quantum physics now, and uh, this is the like the third course in quantum physics that I am learning, so it is very advanced, and sometimes I get a little confused. I'm not young anymore. So <laughs> anyway, I just want to see if there's any questions out there for me. So um, can you tell us what made the one needed in and doing what you do, channeling. Uh, what the was the question? Of your society. I did not understand the question. Say it again. What made them interested in channeling the other members of your society? Oh, they saw... Well, you see, I've been doing this for a while now, and it's gathered some interest. I do have people around me when I speak to you, and they listen to your responses, and they listen to all the different things that we discuss, and they find it rather interesting. And at first, they were unapproving. They did not approve of uh, us speaking because we're a very private people. However, I, I sort of broke that rule in some ways. And now they are understanding that there is a benefit to the communication. As long as we don't leave the planet or invite you here, they are understanding that it is a good thing that we communicate. So many others are looking into the thought process that they might want to do the same thing someday. There is still some hesitation on some people's parts. However, I see the, I see the mind turning. I see the mind turning and they are thinking about actually becoming a, a member, or not a member, but a part of the information flow. Do you understand? Yes. And since you're learning about uh, quantum physics, I was wondering if you could speak a little bit about uh, parallel realities. Parallel realities, they're numerous, and, they're all, and they can intersect one another. They're finding out that it's it's not so much parallel, but it, it stretches out in a continuous uh, phase. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not that they're so separate. They actually are, it is all part of the same vibration stretching out. Does that make sense to you? And, and there are several places where the vibrations become weaker or stronger, and so it's that would seem like a separation, but not necessarily. You see, as you live your life, you are out of phase with the next portion of reality. Does that make sense to you? 
And so therefore, it is really not a new timeline, but the same timeline changing as it moves out from the center of the reality, from the center of that particular timeline. And so it would appear that every single place has their own energy when they become, when a decision is made, when free will is experienced, when something major happens that uh, causes energy, then that energy comes back. As you are moving your energy out, energy is coming back. It, it is a continuum, as it were, out to infinitum, so that you, as this person, in this reality can be very, very different um, many phases out. Does that make sense to you? Yes. So it is not necessary that they be separate because we're learning that they are really not so separate. That would mean that there would have to be distinct separations between the timelines and they could never overlap. But we discovered that they do overlap continuously and sometimes become the same energy at points with the same words and the same decisions, the same thought processes happening very close by. And that is partially why there is deja vu, is because the similar uh, continuum and the phase part of that continuum is the same, only within seconds apart. Do you understand that? So you're saying, uh, if I'm uh, just to clarify it a little bit, um, <clears throat> are you saying that the timelines there could just be slight differences? Um, yes, they are not distinct. They are not so distinct as you once thought. I right. didn't know that we were going to get into this today because it is quite an interesting finding that they have been developing for the last several well, we call them Ashuns, would be your years, but in our last several Ashuns, we have been learning that the phasing of the hum humanity, phasing of all species, timelines are not really so separated, but are intermingling constantly, because why? Because the energy cannot diversify solidly enough to make a distinct timeline, you are in your timeline and that is distinct. However, slightly out of phase from you, from your energy outside your aura, is different phases of reality. Does that make sense to you? So the only one that's distinct is the one that you're in. Mm, you lost me in that last statement. The only timeline that matters or is, seems distinct is okay. the one you are living in. And that timeline can move this way or that way or uh, involve energies of other timelines and find that other decisions which are very similar feed the decisions that you're making. It's, it's, it's quite, it's all about energy transfer. Okay. So then when, when we transfer or, or move into a different timeline, um, what you won't moves, even know it. it. What moves is the, the spirit? The energy. The energy of the body is the spirit, the, is the entire, okay. your entire essence in this timeline moves with you always. Okay, so then what happens to that me that was there, that energy, what happens to that? It absorbs other energy. And that energy abs absorbs you as well because you're, the next portion of reality is only phases away. You phase in and out of it sometimes. That is why you have the deja vu. That is why you have the encountering of other emotions that may not seem realistic to you at times. You, if, 
it depends on how sensitive you are to the energies around you, which timeline you are building into. Does that make sense to you? And this is part of the contractual work also, because energy cannot be really changed in the sense that its basic form is power. So it also also can be transformed, but it is still power. It is still something of uh, creativity. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm trying to put it in the best form as possible. But yes, there are 32 different kinds of energies and and all those in between those, but it is that they can be transformed into these different elements for your thought processes, for your belief systems, for your sexuality, for your touching, for your movement. So all this requires energy and all this is part of the energy fields that you are in and because it can be affected, it can be transformed into another phase. So therefore when you phase into the next timeline or actually who knows what timeline you're really in because you're moving forward and pushing energy and uh, and finding energy and the energy is going back and forth it is an, a constant give and take because that is how energy is but this is this discovery is still not completely defined and it's rather confusing if you want to stop and think about it but um, it does make total sense as far as scientific methods are concerned because to have separate timelines the only timeline that is separated is the timeline that you're moving in and that would be the same for any other any other person or any other species or any other living creature their timeline will change as your timeline does and it only makes sense that they have to intertwine and they have to share energies it does not make sense that they are all separated does that make sense to you yes and yes. so therefore we are finding that you can change when you change your free will or decisions or things of this nature, you change the phase of also the energy which you are moving forward in. And so is it fluid? In other words, do the timeline... Yes, it's very fluid. The, energy the time... is... Go ahead. Uh, okay. Do the timelines... Uh, change as you make decisions um, whatever outcomes are at that moment um, or or are they just all existing and then you're just flowing through them do you see what I'm saying yes I see the energy is there already but you manipulate it with your decisions and with your forward movement and your actions your words everything uh, is affecting the manipulation of this energy you see the plasma ball with all the different little arms stretched out to do the different movements Do you see that in the in the the plasma ball do you understand what I'm saying it's not staying one place it's moving out it's the energy is changing and transforming with the the touching of air with the touching of other energies so yes therefore there is energy out in front of you and you're moving into it it's always move and always moving into you as well so that when you make a decision or uh, or find an understanding that is when that energy is transformed there are certain energies in the universe that are made especially for living beings so they can use it for their emo forward motion and for their uh, manifestation of the many things that they will decide to do in their life does this make sense to you and this is the God spirit at work because God is behind this amazing 
phase energy. Yes, and of course um, it's very scientific. Scientists are saying that the universe is a hologram. What does your civilization say about that? Well, this sort of proves that that is a possibility. Do you understand that? Because with phase energy, with energy that can be transformed immediately with a thought process or with a, an action or a word or with anything, you see, words can transform the energy in the air and make it dark or light or, or, or cause it to affect other people, correct? With this phase energy, it would seem that light and holographic energy and solids, well, because oh, I have to back up a little bit. I'm getting ahead of myself. I, the light that is transformed into solids, because everything is transformed in one way or another to something else. Do you understand that? because that is what it's made to do in this form. The phase energy is used to create and help to create and help to move forward. So therefore, everything being a hologram is very true, but also everything being real is also true. Why? Because you can experience it in a sentient way, which means you can feel it, touch it, know it, but yet it does not have to be real for it to transform into holograph. Now, does that make sense to you? I think maybe I lost some of you. Yes. Can I jump in and yes. offer an explanation? Sure. Okay. So we focus our awareness and it the question becomes what is real and what is reality and as spirit having an experience it doesn't matter because we're experiencing contrast and we're contributing to the expansion so it does not matter whether it's real or a hologram because it's real to us in this now. Yes. And you have transformed it from holograph to real, or real to holograph. It is what the phase, what you believe, your belief system does have something to do how the energy works. Do you understand that? Belief systems and energies work together. There are some species that are holograms because that is what they believe they are. And they can be that in a very real way and be sentient. Does that make sense? Yes. So therefore you believe that you are solid, that things are rough, that things are there, and it is wonderful because the universe is full of so many different visions of itself. Infinity upon infinity of visions of itself and teachings of what God is and perceptions of everything around it. It is so hard to put a single definition on this phase energy because it is all things. It creates all things when it comes to sentience, which is human beings, aliens, any species, anything that is alive, anything that has feeling depth or understanding, it creates their world for them. Does this make sense? Yes. Because I... they are moving forward in their perception, belief systems, and understanding of who they are and what is around them. It's a difficult thing to understand, but we are discovering that phase energy is creation energy. Thank you very much. On that note, I will say that I did ask God <laughs> uh, if the universe was a hologram. 
Um, I've been speaking to the older risk quite a bit lately, and he told me it is a hologram. You are a hologram in my consciousness, but you exist yeah. within and without me, though you are contained within me. Exactly. That explains it perfectly, actually. It is the energy that gives the explanation, because God is the sentient energy that explains all things, creates all things, causes and affects all things. Thank you for that, Lakesh. I love the conversation. The nature of God. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we uh, are learning about this. I'm learning about this in my quantum physics because it just happens to, we just happen to come upon this new idea that they have been working on for a while and so it was very fascinating to me and you sort of just led me right into it and I love to chat about things that I'm learning. And it was synchronous because that's all I've been thinking about lately. So Interesting. Yes. Um, but we are in phase together. Do you see that? This timeline, my timeline, is mine and your timeline is yours. That's the only one that's important. The others are all phased together until you become part of it and then it becomes your timeline and that is the only one that's important is the one that you're in and if they're in another timeline it is phased perhaps into yours somehow but it always sheds energy into the, all, all the others and so the only one that makes any sense is the one that you're in and all the rest of them either feed you or 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 you feed them, and it's a constant exchange of energy moving in and out of phase. This is a lesson that we wanted, to, that Earth needs to learn as well, because this will help them understand how to move much more positively in a positive phase. Even when negative energy comes into your phase, you do not have to accept it as negative energy. You can transmute it. <laughs> it is a beautiful thing, but also you can accept it for what it is. So Lakesh, on practical terms, can you give an example of, of that for us humans? How oh yes, oh absolutely. Um, as you're moving through your life, you're making decisions. Say that you've met someone that you are attracted to or that you are you're drawn to their energy and your energy are phasing in and out constantly and you're determining whether it is a positive or you know that it's positive but there might be some negativity in that but your energies are constantly interfacing with one another now if you find that your bodies have have to interface also then you create a possible in phase between your bodies so they can connect. You understand this? Now, you have transmuted the energy of singularity into a plural energy, making your energy that of the other person's as well. Does this make sense? So the, in this moment in time, when you are fused together, you are moving in the same timeline together. Does okay. that make sense? Yes. Therefore, when you separate, you go back to your separate timelines, your separate decisions, your separate thought patterns, and your separation from this kind of singular energy and continue to live individually as individual people on your own timelines but that they do interface with one another and your energies one to another go back and forth interesting I had not thought of that <laughs> what did you say I said I had not thought of that 
Yes. Is there any other questions? So we have questions from, uh, does anyone in the room with Jim or over, uh, over here on the web have any questions on this subject before we close it? I know that there are some. Oh, okay. I, feel, I feel them bombarding the back of Jim's head. <laughs> Continue. Over here. Over here. Yes, Hello, speak Lakesh. into the microphone. Hello, Lakesh. It's nice to see you. I'm Helga. In, yes, in terms of there's a very good information coming out from a being called a Dronus. Yes. Come September, there'll be an ascent into the fourth and fifth, at least the very positive beginnings toward that, and there'll be a definite change. Can you speak on that? There is a movement to the fourth dimension by your people consistently and constantly, and many, much interaction inadvertently. Now, what I say inadvertently is because fourth dimensional energy has been uh, awakened into the human culture, into your minds, into your consciousness. And therefore, you cannot help but move into the fourth dimension sometimes. Even those that are very third dimensional will have uh, night dreams and things of this nature that will move them into the fourth dimension in some way. Now. This interfacing of fourth dimensional energy is natural. It is the beginning of, of uh, consumption or transference or transmuting into your bodies and all things the fourth dimension. This is how it works. It's a, it's a growth into the next dimension. And it is part of your belief system that this will come because it's part of what you believe in your mind. Even if you are not believing it in the third dimension that you were going to come to the fourth dimension, there is a belief there. Hmm, yes, it, there is something that affirms that within you when you hear it. All right. I, I'm getting a little out there. Yeah, you but, are. Yes. Um, this is back to Dolores Cannon. She always spoke about two worlds, but this is a definite split. This is a definite shift, something that's becoming very obvious to those who are in the know, obviously, and some of the third will fall away. So there will be a break. There will be a definite break come September. Well, it has to be that way. So that's what I wanted you to speak about. The thing is, if you're it's, allowed to. it's so hard to speak of it that way because it's not exactly... Yes, it is the way you said, but no, it isn't the way you said. And let me explain that. She's saying an, uh, an actual break, but from the third dimension to the fourth dimension. Is that what in you're saying? Sense. In a sense. But sense. it's not permanent in the sense that you'll be living in fourth dimension. Well, we will. Those in fourth will be in fourth. Well, I don't know, obviously, but fourth. And then the, the third dimensional people, there will almost be like a screen when it's really moved past that window, past that screen, and when it's still... Well, let me explain something to you. When you're born into third dimension, you cannot go into fourth dimension for more than, your t it, in human terms, 34 days. Because after 34 days, you start to decompose. Because fourth dimension is a... A lighter dimension, density, a yeah. lighter density, yeah. yes. And so therefore, yes, there will be a shift for a greater acceptance and a greater amount of fourth dimensional energy to be within the human being. However, it will not be a pure fourth dimensional experience. It will have third dimensional overtones, which is necessary for your survival because you are not ready to transform from third dimension to fourth dimension like that. You see, it, it's a gradual movement, and as you can see, phase energy will help you with that transformation, but you must move in that direction with that energy, you see. And so what happens is you become more bombarded with a, a different kind of energy. Well, I understand that, so we've all been moving, but I'm saying that will be then going over that hump for all of us that are it moving, is, going over that. And so it's living in all these dimensions, of course. Yes, well, that is what you're doing already. already. You're already doing that. Yes, it is a major shift in the sense that you will feel and think slightly differently. That's what I'm asking. 
Yes, there will be a slight feeling, a slight change, a slight uh, awareness. It, it is an awareness. And it will be part of your emotional awareness as well, part of your spiritual awareness, a lighter feeling because the next density is lighter. However, it will not be fourth dimension as you know it. It will be dimension 3.85 or whatever because you will be close to the fourth dimension but you will not be in it but you will be feeling a lot more of that phase energy from the fourth dimension that comes to to ag accept you to change you to uh, influence decisions creativity thought processes emotions things of that nature. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, so when I'm asking, do you see the acceleration? Yes, the there problem? is an acceleration toward that. acceleration. It's going to really accelerate. It's well, you can't help. Let's put it this way. Do you see how your evolution has been so far? The last 100 years, you've excelled at the, the speed of light, pretty much. In your learning, your knowledge, your your evolution has just come forward in all the things that you're known. You're expanding in such a great speed. So therefore, the fourth dimension is the same in the sense that you will be moving into it in a, a very quick way. However, at first, at the beginning of this, you cannot be bombarded. You see, the beginning of your evolution 100 years ago was slow, and it moved faster, 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 faster. You see that. And that is how this will be as well. It will start off slow. It will be a definite change. It will be a definite um, sensation. It will be a different spirituality. But it won't be such that you will be going mad trying to accept no, it. And, that's not and it is gradual. Just like everything in the universe when it comes to moving forward. They make sure it, it's built in survival. It's built in survival that it starts off slow and moves quickly whenever you can accept it the quickly. But <laughs> did you come from a molecule and then move to a body immediately? No, there had to be many phases of changes, many phases of creation and evolution before you could even get out of the water. So this is the same. Although you will be coming into a great amount of fourth dimensional energy, you already have some. You already have some. Your third dimensional minds were awakened to fourth dimensional energy years ago. And the, the reason I can tell you that and the proof of it is many of you that are a little older we can remember moving in society and it seemed black and white. It seemed less emotional to move through your life. Do you remember those times when emotions were not given very strongly, where things were left to privacy and, and things were not quite, social situations were a little different. But when they, when they came, when you finally had something to drink or the, the, uh, the body was loosened, then all these things came out. But be before then, you were private. You weren't that open. But now, things are starting to open with your emotions. Th the fourth dimensional energy is adding color to your life. The fourth dimensional energy is adding dimensions to your life as well. So, yes, there is an opening of the fourth dimensional portals. Yes, no question. Yeah. And so the positive polarity is becoming more and more overt. The surface disclosure of the criminal um, activity this summer much more overt, making the Snowden files almost like a drop in the bucket of what we've been told so far. Things will be coming across in the media more. Things will be more and more disclosed. The surface disclosure. Yes. Inner, and you might be surprised what the truth is. Yeah. Inner, inner, but can you hear her? Can you hear her? In inner earth, there has been certain, I don't know, you. Have, I wonder if you have any insight on this. Not completely, we couldn't hear the, the whole thing. They can't hear you. Well, it doesn't matter. Certain yes, it does. 
<laughs> no, no, they need to know. They need to hear what you're saying. Well, I'm just wondering if you could confirm some of the things that Adronis has said. He's channeled by Brad Johnson, and it's pretty powerful stuff that he came up with um, a couple, a little while back. Okay. And yes, we know of this. Yeah. Okay. And so that's the information I'm referring to. That there has been communication with the inner Earth. That they're now made some solid decisions to begin to show themselves more to certain individuals, certain groups where light beings were showing themselves more and more. So the positive polarity is going to make quite a, um, an obvious jump. Yes, of course. It is what is the next step. Of course, channeling and, and aliens and things of the metaphysical will be becoming part of the um, public eye, will be becoming part of that which is more normal instead of secretive or underground or things of that nature. It's just exciting information <laughs> for us humans waiting. Yes, understood. Yes, very much. And, and yes, his, in many ways his words are very futuristic. It has to be a slow movement in that direction. But it is happening, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's no question. Thank you for that confirmation. There is no question. He is correct on those things. It may not happen as quickly as you think, but it will happen. It is quite a prediction. Yes. I mean, yes, it is quite a bit. And it will happen, but not as quickly as you would like it to. It's because the people are there. There are many people that are ready for it already. And there are many people that are not. The reason I bring it up is the drone is, is quite good and pretty good information that comes across. And of course, he says there's nothing definite, but the probability yes. was 99.9, .9, whatever he had Well, the thing is, the reason why it's nothing is definite in the future is because there are decisions to be made. There's energy to change still. Time and lines. how you... And, and your timeline can change these energies. The thought processes mm -hmm. of many people can change things. And this is what is... The variable in the future is all you are mo you are all moving in a particular way, and that is the probable future at this time. But it can change. Mm -hmm. The probable future can change. Remember that. Okay. Um, we have a question from Mark Lakesh. Um, he says, "What can we do to move in optimal timelines?" You keep yourself in spirit, you keep yourself aware, you keep yourself protected, and you find the perfect person that you are, your uniqueness, and keep your attachment to God pure, and you will move perfectly and quickly in the timeline the way you're supposed to. The problem with moving in the timeline is there's so many obstacles in your third dimensional belief systems and in the people around you they have developed negative thought processes they've developed all these different things to protect themselves from what they believe to be harmful whereas if they would give up some of these negativities they would find out that the only thing that they're protecting themselves from is goodness and positivity they're really not protecting themselves from anything negative they're actually holding on to negativity, blocking positivity. Unlimit yourselves, people. Yes. Feel better. What other questions are there out there? So there was another one from Omrad on the same kind of line. It says, what is the power of the heart and the emotion love? How can we be one with everything through love? Yes. What is well? When you have a great sensation of love, you have taken uh, this energy and brought it into a God place, and are projecting it out for healing. Love is actually a healing energy. You see, love is the most healing energy there is. Now, even passionate love, uh, platonic love, and all all sorts of love and positive, positivity are healing because what happens if you say hello to someone on the street that can sometimes change their entire day is that not correct if you say something kind to someone that is healing of the emotion 
and sometimes it can bring a greater positivity than you can imagine. So when you take this phase energy and bring it into the heart and make it into love, transmute it or transform it into love, then you are making it into a healing energy, a positive energy, an inclusive energy, and one of the energies that has the greatest effect on humanity and of all species that there is. Okay, thank you. Carolina's next. Hello, Matesh. Greetings. This is Carolina. How are you? I am very well. <laughs> Matesh, I just wanted to ask, um, in your opinion, how do you deal with negative energy in order for us to um, advance better? Well, it's all in how you accept negativity. You see, some people, there are so many different ways to accept or deny or push away negativity. There are all sorts of ways to perceive it. It's your perception of negativity that matters the most. You see, if you see it as something that is dangerous and harmful and is going to hurt you, then your perception of negativity is too strong. You must perceive it as something that you can deal with, something that you can push away, something that is not something that you have to bring into your life. Now, you have deaths in the family, you have definite things that cause you to feel what you would perceive as negativity. It's your perception of that that is negative and not the actual feeling. Because when a loved one passed away and you're missing them and you have sorrow and you have tears and you feel like that there's a very dark cloud, you must perceive that that is you processing information and processing your belief system on how you should feel. Now, if you realize that they are in a better place. If you realize that this particular experience is a selfish action when you're feeling this negativity or sadness and sorrow, you're able to get through it a lot faster. That is only one example of how to deal with negativity, is to realize the positive outcome. Because there is always a positive side. Always. There are people that deal with family members that they have been feuding with their entire lives. They have negativity back and forth with these particular people. If you stop giving your portion of the negativity and start looking at people with in their souls to love them as human beings, as who they really are, how can you still be feuding? If you perceive who they really are in their soul of souls, the God in them, you will know that there is goodness there and there is positivity. There cannot help but be because they are not born as evil or negative creatures. So therefore, your perception, your belief system, your positivity can change the situation. Now, they may never change, but guess what? If you change, there will be no fights. Because when they start something, you will look at them with love and not be able to fight back. That's brilliant. Thank you so much. Yes, it does. Thank you so much. I love you. I love you as well. <laughs> Is there another question? Yes. Um, Christine had a question, but on what you just said, uh, Lakesh, what do you do when that person keeps still giving negativity? You adjust, love them, and look into their soul and see 
who they are in their positivity. And if they continue to give you negativity, just love them. Because it is up to you to be the greater positivity. And phase in and out with what is all around you. Take in all the good things and know that when these people are giving the negativity, it is not because of who you are, but because of who they are and their belief systems and what they have accepted from others. They believe what other people say. They believe society. They brought in the negativity of the their belief systems and their world and you do not have to be a part of that you may feel the hurt but you do not have to accept it you can say to yourself I love them anyway and I know that sometimes that is very difficult because you love these people you are creating a good and positive feeling for them and they're bringing negativity in their place but if you do not fight with them if you do not interact Keep your mouth closed, keep your heart open, what more can they do? You may have to swallow your pride, but what, what is your pride? What is your pride? Why must it be demonstrated at this particular time? Why do we have pride? Or why is it that we feel hurt? Is it something that you are taking personally? You know who you are. Be the perfect person who you are. They cannot tell you who you are. You already know. So if they say you're a bitch, you have to accept that. It's hurtful because they think it. But you know it's not true. Or is it? Or... Can you bring that love out to show them that you're not? Now, these are things to think about. But actions, the action of love, speaks so loud to the entire world. And I know that sometimes they'll go back and say, yes, I read her the riot, and she said nothing, so that makes me right. Does it? No, because guess what? The person she's telling knows her as well or him. They know who they are and whether they should believe them or not. Be the one to be believed. Be the one to be believed. Be the one that is to be on the upstanding portion of belief. Transmute that energy into your, your positive thought process. <laughs> it is not easy for third dimension no people to do that. But it is necessary if you want to get through some of these negativities. Thank you, Lakesh. Yes. That's beautiful. Brian is going to share. Okay. Just as an expression for our humanness, Taking the higher ground is going up in a dimension of frequency. We spoke of the fourth dimension earlier. That is a frequency of feeling. And when we are creating love, sometimes the most simplest is to say thank you. Say thank you for every single organ. And after you've went through, what frequency are you at now? Saying thank you for the external person who has allowed you to feel even from a lower energy center. The mention of pride, again, that is a self-identification. The expression of gratitude is the frequency of love. That is the baseline for creating what we want to feel. When we express gratitude, gratitude, hold that elevation, hold that frequency. It allows the body to be at ease and allows the true feelings to be recognized and felt. Our feelings are our energy centers, where it goes from the non-physical into the physical. So expressing gratitude can often support, just as you, you shared, the idea of creating love. Correct. 
This is correct, and it is a good observation, and I thank you for telling that, because that may reach some that did not understand how I said it. And there are so many ways to say it. It all comes down to one thing. The creation of love is something that you must learn within yourself, must find within yourself, and between you and your God connection. Thank you. Um, Christine is next. Greetings, Lakesh. Greetings. Um, in the idea of um, the different timelines, um, in Fox News they had presented a, a group of women who um, discussed uh, getting rid of algebra from our educational system. <laughs> in, Sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Very sad. <laughs> Continue. But um, my thing is is thinking along the timelines again, because I understand that in each timeline we're learning um, about an issue in different perspectives. Yes. Would it be so wrong for me to um, imagine and send expressing gratitude and love and so on and so forth for these women to bring out such a foolish notion? Um, that the majority of USA, I already yes. know the world is laughing at us, but that the majority of citizens in the USA laugh at them and therefore um, it's gone. That they, they, <laughs> Some of these uh, mayors actually won't pass that. I mean, is it wrong yes. for me? No. Let's send them love. Send them the intention of understanding. Because even though they see no usefulness in it, they cannot perceive its usefulness, so they think that no one else can. And so therefore, their perception of their world, their belief systems are controlling their thought processes. And therefore, send them the intention of full understanding. Send them the intention of love for themselves, because part of their misunderstanding of what algebra is is part of a missing piece within them and that missing piece translates to the rest of the world does it not and everyone knows these people have a missing piece here they do not understand what is happening with what algebra really is and what it does and how it relates to the culture, how it relates to the universe, how it relates to infinity, because algebra is ancient. If um, I understand that um, somebody was explaining or expressing themselves and saying that for subjects that are difficult for them, if they imagine themselves as a master of it, that um, it opens them up to comprehend that. So it is true. Okay, so in this particular case, <laughs> what if I wish upon them <laughs> that all of a sudden one night they have a wonderful dream and algebra makes so much sense? Because I don't think it's so much as them as I think it's Fox News or that group that wishes to make women appear stupid. I understand. You see, the belief systems are the important part of this. Oh. They have to believe that it has a use. They have to believe that whatever they are doing is to benefit the world. How can they possibly believe that this is going to benefit the world. They must have something in their belief system that tells them this, correct? So to change their thought process, to open themselves up to that, is to make them aware that there must be a use. So, keep it in your mind that this is only a small group. And yes, yeah. Keep it also in your mind that there are those that would want to make others look lower than themselves 
or laugh at others because then they feel greater. But there is a deficiency in them to have to feel this way. So all of you, remember, if you are laughing, it is good to laugh. And you, it is good to make fun of things and even yourself and, and others, but not to the point of derision or to the point that you are actually looking down on people or things because everything is equal. A molecule is equal to a human because what? There may be a world within that e molecule that you know nothing about. We need a comedian who could bring all that together. I'll work on it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Someone said Donald Trump. He's an actor. He does well. Yes. Someone said he's a comedian. But anyway. <laughs> anyway. Very, very well. I understand where you're coming from and your intention to shed light on this subject with these this small group of people will will have an effect. It will have an effect. We just and have to it find is already it. having an effect. Thank oh. you. <laughs> okay. How many timelines did I affect? I hope many, many, many. <laughs> Remember, the only important one is, is your own. One. Because it contains yeah. now. Correct. Now that is why the Chakani can can reach their timelines is because they understand phase energy. Is that something like by full creation by by or I don't know how to pronounce that word. Where many timelines in your language. I'm not sure what that word means. I would have to look that up in your language. It's a it's a crossing of many. Uh, it's a crossing of many lines. Yes, it is a crossing of many lines. <laughs> yes. <coughs> Excellent. You have another question. So, thank you. You are very welcome. Um, Neil has a question next, Lakesh, but uh, I just want to check to make sure that uh, Jim doesn't need water, any hydration. I am, I am checking with him now. One moment. Continue. <laughs> okay. Neil. Okay, hello, hello Lakesh. How are you? Stay hydrated, my friends. Yes, Neil. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I am excellent. Good. Okay, so this question is about a different subject, and it's about something you spoke of, you spoke of in the beginning when you came through. So you said yes. that there's a lot of entities that you know that are learning to channel just now. So um, yes, there's something I've been interested in for quite a while. Is what what's the process of channeling channeling from the other side? Well, we use technology. Is that what you're asking? Yeah, I know. I know that I've heard that other species use technology, but I was curious about the way that you did it, and if you could also speak about like the different ways that different species do it, if they do it in different ways, and what the technology yes. is also that you use to assist yourselves. Yes, we have translation technology. Also, we interface with the channel areas in the human brain. Oh, there are certain areas of the human brain that we can find that are more accessible to our particular vibration and energy. Now other species may find that their vibrational energy does not fit with the same channel. Humans have many channels in the brain. The brain is not completely open for channeling just quite yet, but there are many humans that are now processing. This is one of those changes that fourth dimensional energy will allow is greater accessibility to the channel areas in the mind. Many people only have one or two. There are some that have several. You have more than one or two. So therefore, 
many different kinds of beings can access your thought processes when you're open in more than one way. You see, I, would, I find that you have a channel for us as well. We would be able to come through you. Our vibration would work with you. So that way you would be able to uh, channel us if, therefore, your belief system is acceptable to that. Your physiology is already acceptable, but you need the belief system to make it happen. Yes. Okay, so when you're talking about the channels within your brain, what, what do you actually mean when you say channels? There are places in the brain that are accessible for certain vibrations so that we can speak to them, and they are a communication area in the brain. There is the communication area in the brain is actually more than one place. There's vocal communication, there's psychic communication, there's telepathic communication, there's empathic communication. We can access one of those areas and find channels. All those areas have different channels. And there's also eye communication. There's all third eye communication. There's many different areas that can be accessed for channeling other beings, spirits, angels, God, things of this nature. And they're not all in the same place. They are all accessible in some way, but you must have the belief system to make them operate as well and also to open them sometimes. Yes, because your belief systems are the first yes. filter that comes through, right? Oh, sorry, on, sorry, on you go. Sorry. Uh, I think I... What did you say? Uh, sorry, well, yeah, I was just saying because your belief systems are always comes... It filters through your belief system first. Is that, is that That's right. Yes. Is that right? It does filter through your belief systems at times. Um, but a lot of people are open to it, so it, it is already part of their belief system to accept it. But what it is now is you just have to find that place and relax into it. Okay, it will be there. Okay, so one other question I've got is... Oh, sorry. Well, I'll let you go first. Sorry. Sorry, on you go. <laughs> sorry. I was just going to say that it's the belief system that you need to... All of the channels are in this now. Okay? So if you relax into it, like Lakesh said, that if you relax into it, you're allowing the entire now. You're allowing yourself to be the entire now. And so huh. all the different levels can come through at that point. So you don't have to limit yourself to any one particular dimension or limit yourself to any one particular being. And it is also part of phase energy. It will come to work for you. That phase energy, you're changing it into the energy you need. Yes. And so... It is a beautiful thing. And you do it naturally. You learn to use phase energy for your own good for many times. Unless, of course, you believe that you are not a valuable person. And then you use phase energy to make negative things for yourself. But uh, phase energy is best used when positive. Okay, so one thing I'm also interested in is what what is the technology like that uh, entities use when they are when they are channeling, when they are the ones that are given the channeling, what, what's the technology like? It is a... Well, first of all, let me explain something. Before you can even use the technology to get to the human mind and brain, you have to know the language. The language is the first thing that has to be learned. It must be inputted and it must be tr translated properly or else you're not going to have a good channel session because I would be telling you things that are not true. First of all, that is something that we did have to regulate at the beginning of our transmissions to Earth. There were some things that came through that were not correct. But now we have fine-tuned it, 
and much more of the truth. Ninety, it's ninety-nine percent pure at this time. So it was not that pure to begin with. And the other thing is, then you have to have neural connections. You must connect both my mind to your mind, or my mind to the mind that is going to be used. There are places that uh, you must evaluate the vibration of each portion of the brain and find that place where you are most compatible and where the brain is open for this kind of action. Now, the other portion of this is that there has to be compatibility. Now, I am compatible with several different species, but not all species in their brains. Now, I could not channel with a mantis person. I could not channel with an insectoid because we are not set up to do that. We could possibly do that in the future, but it is we have not set up to... We do have their languages, so we do try to just speak it to them. As, but it is not set up in a translator of any sort. We just learn the language and speak it to them as best as we can. So therefore, there is much technology in interpretation. And with this technology also, you have to use the brain of the person that you are channeling with for some phraseology, because not every word that we have translates into every word they have. It's not like we have an exact same meaning process. So therefore, we have to use some phrases from the human mind. So that has to be accessed as well. And the, vice versa, they have to be able to uh, hear this, these words and know what it means in our language so that it can be... Um, 100% accurate. Does that make sense? So therefore, we, there is a download given to the human for our language, but not necessarily for them to speak, but for them to help channel. Um, let's see. There are fiber optics used in our transmissions as well because it helps to um, fine-tune vibrations Light helps to fine-tune vibrational activity. Is, is there anything else you need to know? Okay, so one other thing I was, I was curious about. Is there certain light workers on the planet who, who later on will be able to channel through other humans? Not at this time. There won't be humans channeling humans. But except for when they're on a spaceship and using technology. Now, if there's technology on your planet for them to channel into another human mind, that is possible. But I do not think it exists actually on your planet at this time. It does exist on Gurkvik Nir, which is the ships around your planet. But, and I know that humans have a channeled through the Gurkvik Nirian process but it is not a part of the earthly exist, uh, experience at this time. Right, okay, you answered my question. Okay, thank you very much for that, Lakesh. I'm sorry, everybody, for taking so long. But, yeah, thank you very much for that. Much love. Love. So. Hello, Lakesh. Guru Dan. Lakesh. I have a Hello. member. I have a member question from uh, from Peter. He says he created with his device a connection with an Essasani portal. Can you elaborate yeah. more? What does this mean? And then he comments that another alien told him that this was caused, or that it has caused his strong emotional roller coaster. So is there something up with yeah. uh, with his portal there? Does he need an attunement or something? He has. He has. A Tesla coil and this is causing great energy fluctuations and he did create a vortex with this coil but <clears throat> Peter it is not it's not uh, regulated and so that is why you have great 
energy fluxes up and down and it's bringing in all kinds of energies from the Asasani or Chakani area. If I were you, I would either close it down or make it or weaken it in some way because it it's going to cause a great emotional roller coaster as you said. But what you want it to do is only bring in the positive energy. This can happen with some intention. However, there is something on the other side that is not regulated as well. So you have to realize it is open on both sides. Your side, please temper. Please um, find a way to bring in only positive energy because obviously it is open to all kinds of things on the other side. Does this make sense to you? So therefore, uh, put a muzzle on it, cover it up a little bit, turn it upside down, let it not be so active in your household because it is not all positive energy and it is you have to learn how to use it before uh, uh, you can uh, open it up quite that wide. I'm so uh, surprised. Did you do that with your crystal? I don't have him on in real time. He's he's left a message and I just read the question afterward. I see. Very well. I will talk to him about it later. Okay. Lakesh, I have something for you. Yes. I wanted to say thank you for uh, the information that you shared with me on Halloween with the webinar group about the uh, the agenda from the Great Assembly when you announced um, my level of healing and, no. and all of that and opened up that whole can of worms. I wanted to say thank you and I hope that can you didn't have worms. any yeah, can of worms, yeah, that whole healing thing. Yeah, you kind of opened up uh, that whole thing to my uh, awareness, and it was really Are wonderful. Are worms appealing to you? Uh, sometimes when there's fishing involved, worms come in handy, yeah. I see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I wanted to... I wanted to have, you didn't get into any grief over uh, that announcement, did you? Because I didn't think that that was, that was a very severe thing that they should have bothered you over. Oh, not a problem. Not a problem. And thank you for your gratitude. Oh, but your you're... worms look very tasty. I was wondering if they were something that... I did not think that you ate worms down here. No, we don't, but some, some beings do, mainly fish oh, and your... birds. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they like I each see. other, those things. Yeah. And some, some TV oh. shows like them, but I'm not going to get into that. But um, I wanted to thank you again. Worms it's possible. Yeah, we do sure. like worms and grubs. But from our planet, I don't know what your worms taste like. Yeah, it'd be uh, gourmet worms then. Yes, maybe they would be gourmet worms. But, but we have our own. Gummy yeah, gummy worm. What? <laughs> <laughs> this isn't the direction I planned on the topic going, but it is funny. But another reason I wanted to thank you for the announcement is because that that opened up um, some possibilities for some healing to happen to some some beings that desperately needed it. And I didn't know if you were aware of that or not. I don't know if you know the story of Dorama and the thing that happened with that. Uh, that information. Oh uh, yes, available. I know Dorama. Yes, I know who that okay, is. Okay, so that all that all came about because of your announcement that day. All of that healing it's happened. And tons so of others. Happy. Yes. Okay. And more, even I know more is going story. to happen. Yeah, so I wanted it's to say thanks for all that. become well known. Oh, awesome. Awesome. But I wanted to thank you and make sure that it was a public thank you so that you were aware and everybody else was aware that a really great thing happened that day. Yes, thank you. And a really great thing with you as well. Dorama is shouting out to the universe all the wonderful things that are happening. So that is a great thing. Yes, thank you, Lakesh. And I don't know who's next. If Sabrina has somebody going on there, I'm not sure. Wendy. Wendy. Hi. Hi, Lakesh. How are you today? Thank you for being here. 
It is I, yes. Thank you. Thank you so much for everyone's wonderful questions, and most of them have been answered. I did want to ask one question about the idea of the communications with respect to the languages. I did have a question about many of the languages that are spoken here on Earth sound a great deal, um, or many of our Native American languages sound a great deal like galactic languages, which is one of my highest joys to communicate with you and many other beings in that manner. And I was wondering if you could speak a little bit about the connection between the languages here on Earth and the galactic languages, being that they do sound so similar. And well, if you could reiterate a, a little bit about the connection between all of us that are speaking these languages now and how we're connecting with you. Well, you've, your planet was seeded by many different species. And the languages from ancient times have somehow been brought forward in some way. So that they, some do sound like the galactic languages. But like insectoid and reptilian and things of that nature do not necessarily sound very humanoid. However, Arcturian, uh, some Lyran, some uh, Syrian, some of the other, uh, you yell for sure, many Andromeda languages definitely had their, uh, you brought, they brought their language to your people. Now, let me tell you how they got integrated. Your people did have a grunty sort of language to start with. And it was a hoot hub, but yes, and you know it was very primitive. But when some certain species came, they wanted to be able to communicate to your people, so they put translators on their head. They, it looked like a little bit like a crown, and and when they put these on their heads, they were able to speak and hear the galactic languages, interpret them and know what that was being said by the uh, species that were there. This became a common practice. That's where crowns come on your, on your planet, is that these translators brought the intellect up of these people, and they started to think that they were special. They didn't give these to everyone, but the most intellectual of the tribe or group would have crowns on their head. They looked like crowns, but they were actually translators and so they were able to communicate with the, with the aliens or the species and therefore were also able to speak the language back to them. And these things were carved in stones, written on the, on the ground and in their languages. Some had vocabulary, some had alphabets. And so it became the sound of their languages changed eventually because of these aliens that came to bring information to the earth and putting these certain translators on helped change how people spoke they they became interested in the phonetics of the species that was speaking does that make sense to you and yes, therefore everything. changed some of their languages, and it, it, it did evolve. Excellent. Thank you very much for that explanation. I, I kind of thought as much. So with respect then to um, fi vibration and frequency and timelines then, would then it stand to reason that we then would be communicating or resonating therefore with specific languages would that be because they're more of our direct connection to specific, like our family, for example? It is, yes. There are those that will connect because of the seeding of your populations with that particular seeding. But there are others that are just open to many, multiple languages, and those people will just gravitate to, to these different sounds and phonetics and languages on their own because that is what is meant to be for that particular life. 
Thank you for answering that question for me as well, um, without me actually asking it. Um, yes, I, I, I know I, who you are. <laughs> yes, I, I know. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask you as well about the Pleiadian. There seems to be many channelers right now who are feeling this influx of Pleiadian energy and different um, councils, different collectives that have, that have been resonating and connecting with, with several channelers. Could you just elaborate a little bit on that, um, on this, this seemingly influx of well, new, there, well what seems so to be much new? Information. There's so much information out there that <laughs> you are not evolved enough to grasp all the information that is out there, but there are so many species that are wanting to come and tell their part and give you their portion of, of what they understand to be their portion of your enlightenment to help you along, their information, their understanding of who you are, and or give them an understanding of who they are. And so there's so many out there, there's an influx of many that want to give the earth information. And so you will have many channelers and there will be many more, but some will will rise to the top and be able to give the greatest amount of information. So therefore, and there will be many that speak to many people, but there will be a few that will continue to rise until the information that they bring will be very high purpose for the ascension. And that is the information that you are looking for. And there will be much information and it will all help into in the evolution of mankind and in the evolution of things to come for the fourth dimensional energies of course these people are all necessary it's just like to make a building you have to have many different things but yet without them the building cannot be made but yet one important brick is as important as the very spire that is on the top of the building. Do you understand? I completely agree. Thank you, Lakesh, for that. So there have to be many bricks in the building so that the building can be seen and understood and be accepted for what it is. Beautiful analogy. Yeah, Thank you so much. I'm not and I send sure. my I send my love to my Pleiadian family and, and all of you, and thank you so much for being here and, and answering these wonderful questions for us today. Miatu Ayamakia Samiatu. Oh, you are so welcome. You are so welcome. Is there any more questions, or do you want somebody else to come? Um, there was one more question from Christine on the subject of languages, and then... Yes. Lakesh, there, um, many years ago, over 20 years ago, I was taking an archaeology class and they yeah. introduced um, a tribe in Africa that was about three feet, four feet tall. And yeah. in their language, they used whistles, chirps, and um, clacking, and so on and so forth. It's part of their language. Where, yeah. where did that particular tribe, they were very isolated until people started logging that area. They but were visited by the insectoids. The insectoids have clicking, whistling, and unusual sounds in their vocabulary. Also, they, are, they were affected um, physiologically by them. They gave them some uh, infusions and that's caused their race to become smaller in size and uh, these clicks they thought perhaps that it, they were doing them a good uh, doing something good for them because they saw that the insects on earth thrived in a greater way than the human population the human population was very fragile and so for this tribe, they gave them insectoid um, hybridization because they thought that it would help them, which it did actually help them with their physiological endurance on the planet. As you see, insectoid, insects thrive 
on this planet. And that's one of the things that insectoids love about this planet is it is the perfect all over this planet is perfect atmosphere for insects. However, they are not permitted here after uh, after certain incidences, but they still come as much as they can. But they were cast out by some of the governments. Whatever happened to um, those tribes? Because they were um, moved out of their forest because of the forest. They wanted the some people wanted the forest, and they were moved into um, into the outside land where there was no trees and whatever yeah. happened to them. Well, some of them died off, and some of them were taken by the insectoids off the planet. That's good. That's good. It was not by their choice. The insectoids decide to do this on their own, and now they're completely oh. hybridized within the insectoid population. So there is no, they are no longer humanoid. Exactly. And such is life. Very well. Thank you. You are welcome. Well, thank you. Does anyone else in the room with Jim have a question for Lakesh? Okay, it seems yeah. that ev everyone is it's done. Um, it just seems like I have taken up most of the time. And it's great because we love you and we wanted you here. So, um, well, thank you very much. <laughs> Um, would you like to give us a blessing before you go, Lakesh? Uh, certainly. Blessings are always lovely and very acceptable in all cultures, except maybe a couple. Yes, it's a Oh, <laughs> I did it in our ancient language. I thought you might enjoy it. What it interprets to is this. From the beginning of time, there has always been something there that moves the energy, that makes it feel and think and discover that makes it create and know certain things about itself and other things. Let us all understand that we are part of that ancient energy and move forward knowing that, that we will always be part of it and always grow and learn and sense and be creative in our perfect selves and as we move forward, we become more perfect and more understanding of what it is that is and we are part of. Thank you, Lakesh. You are welcome. Namaste. Have a wonderful day. You too, Lakesh. Enjoy your grandchild. Oh, she is a delight. Don't get me started. Okay. <laughs> I do love her so much. She is just like mm, my perfect little girl. <laughs> Very well. I will leave you now. Have a wonderful day. And be of good health. You too. Enjoy your, your grandchild and, and your wife and your husband. 
Yes, thank you. They thank are you all very you. well. Hello. Hey, Jim. hey, how is everybody? Hi, hey, Jim. Welcome back, Jim. Have a drink. Good. I am going to have a drink.